Today we'll discuss one more binary search tree. And this will be kind of different binary search tree. So we'll discuss AVL trees. AVL trees is like standard binary search tree. It's very simple. You have simple property. You kind of make all dissertations to maintain this property. And this property guarantees you that the hate always be logarithmic. Uh, we discussed trips. Trip is also kind of simple data structure. You have all you have a tree, you maintain very simple property, and by making the random some by assigning random keys uh, to your nodes, you maintain uh, the height of this tree, ex the expected height of this tree logarithmic. Uh, today we'll discuss kind of kind of different binary search tree. It's called split tree. Play tree is very cool. Uh, we will not maintain any properties. We will not save any additional data in our nodes. We will not have, a, we will not have any special keys. We will not remember the height of the tree. We will not remember the weight of the tree. We will not remember anything. We will just build a binary search tree. And this tree will balance itself using some internal magic. Absolutely magic. So, uh, so any binary search tree is a valid splay tree. So at some point, your split tree may look like this. This is a valid split tree. Every tree is a valid split tree. Uh, if your tree is like this, it means that your split tree thinks that this tree is, is best possible tree for you right now. So in each point of time, your split tree maintains some structure which kind of uh, optimize your current situation. Mm -hmm. And some internal magic keeps this tree balanced for your current situation. Something like that. No, splay is splay. Splay is kind of strange word. I, I'm not exactly sure what it means. I believe I never saw this word in any book other than about splay trees. Um, so how does it work? Uh, the main operation in the splay tree is splay. So that's why it's called splay tree. Splay operation is very simple. So you have operation splay x. Uh, this operation takes some node of your tree. So you have some tree. And you take some node of your tree. And by some rotations, you transform your tree into the same tree, but uh, this x is now the root of the tree. So you make the splay operation, and now you have the same tree, but this x is the root of the tree. You, you can do it, you, you make it some rotations. Yes, so you have this path, you have this path to your root, and you make some rotations of these edges. So this x will become the root. So every node may be the root of the binary search tree, right? So you have, let's build some tree. You have some 10 here, 5 here, like 8 here. So any element may be the root of the tree, yes? So you, if, for example, if you take this 12 and call the uh, splay operation from this Twelve, you will have tree something like that. So twelve will be the root of the tree, and all elements will be somewhere here. <laughs> something like that. Mm -hmm. So again, again, what happens? You take some node of your tree and make some rotations to make this element the root of the tree. That's the plan. Now, how all other operations work? All other operations work very simple. I don't need this actually. We will. I will draw a better tree. How all other operations work? So let's, uh, you have some operation find. So what happens when you need to find some node in your tree? You start from the root and then follow the path to your element. 
It was pretty simple. We, we discussed it on the first lecture about about search trees. So start from the root. Each time you look on the uh, your, your current node, check which key, which key is, is is greater. So if your key is greater greater than the, the key in the current node, then you go to the right subtree. If it is less, you go to the left subtree, and so on until you find your element. Uh, so you find your element, and after you find your element, you make the display operation. So you go all the way down to this node X, and then after this, you call the display operation for this node X. That's the whole plan. That's the whole plan. So, and uh, this is how all operations in display tree works. In, in all operations, if you need to access some node, you travel all this path, well, all this path, all this path to your node X, then take this node X and call display operation. Display operation just moves this node to the root. So all operations work like this. So this find you do you do something, 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 in the end you make display. That's the whole plan. That's the whole plan of this binary search tree. So after any operation in the binary search tree, if you need to go down to this node, then in the end you take this node and call display operation for, for, for this node. This play operation will, uh, will move this uh, node uh, up to the, to, to the same path uh, to up to the root and make this element the root of the tree. Yeah. Cool. That's all. Now, uh, I will prove that time complexity of all these operations is log n. Uh, that's not exactly. I, I will prove that amortized time complexity is log n. So I will prove that amortized time complexity of this find operation is log n. No, let's remember what, what, what is what is amortized time complexity. Amortized com time complexity means if you have a sequence of operations, so if you have some sequence of operations, some k operations, okay, then the total time complexity of these k operations, the total time complexity of these k operations, is one, two, three. And so on. Okay. So we have sequence of k operations in your splay tree. So if you uh, call this sequence of operations, the total time you spend uh, is no more than k log n. Not by some constant, let's say. Mm -hmm. That's what amortized time complexity means. Mm -hmm. So every single operation. Maybe maybe long. So if you have tree like this, and you try to access this node, then time complexity of this operation will be linear. So you, you need to travel this path plus this path. So total time complexity will be linear, but it may it may it may not happen all the time. So so some operations may be long. May may, may be how called. Maybe too long, but total time complexity will be no more than logarithmic. That's the plan. So that's what amortized time complexity means. Uh, how I will prove this? Uh, I will prove this very simple. I will prove the time complexity of display operation. So if you look on how this fine operation works, you need to travel all this path down, and then you call splay, and this splay operation uh, travel all this the same path up. So the time complexity of this find is actually the same, like no more than let's say two by time complexity of splay operation. Right? So splay operation travels all this path from bottom to top, and find operation uh, travels all this path down and then to all this path up. So we need to make twice number of Operations, right? Uh, so I will prove that time complexity of this play operation is logarithmic. Mm -hmm. 
And if time complexity of play operation is logarithmic, then time complexity of wine is also logarithmic. And also, all time complexity of all other operations is logarithmic. So if you need to access some node, you can do it in logarithmic time. You, you travel down, then take this node, make play operation, and because of play operation, we'll prove that amortized time of play operation is logarithmic, then amortized time of all operations is logarithmic. Cool. That's the plan. Okay. <clears throat> No questions by now. Cool. Now, how to make display operation? Uh, display operation. Uh, so we will do it in three different steps. Uh, so each time we will look on the node X and two parents of this node. So we will look on these two nodes. So this node will be P. So this is the parent of the node, this is the grandparent of our node. Average height may be, no, uh, what, what's my average height? Average height will not be logarithmic. So at some point you may build a tree like this. That's absolutely normal. So uh, that's normal. It basically, it means that you don't need this node. If you don't access this node, the your split tree may decide that this node is not important and put it in the bottom of your, of your tree. That's fine. But after you access this node, you make split operation and this node will, will be moved up to the tree. It's, so if you know how the caches work, it's kind of absolutely this kind of the same. So when you access something, this element is moved in the front of your queue, something like that. Yeah? So something similar happening here. So when you access some node, this node is moved to the top of your tree. So all the nodes which were recently accessed are moved up to the to, closer to the root of the tree. So they, they may be accessed faster. And if some node is not accessed, it may drawn down to the bottom of the tree. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Cool. So how this play works? We will look on two nodes on the parent of this of this node and uh, the grandparent also. So we look at this node, two nodes. Uh, and let's consider three, three, three possible cases. Uh, case number one. If node X has no grandparent, it means that we only have this parent and this parent is the root of the tree. So we have this X and its parent is the root of the tree. So in this case, how to make x the root of the tree? Very simple. We make rotation of this edge. So we make one rotation of this edge. Uh, so after we rotate this edge, we have x as the, the root of the tree. P is go here. A, B, C go here. A, B, C. That's all. So now x is the, the root of the tree. Very simple. Uh, this operation is called zig. Now, if x has a grand grandparent, so if, if x is not a son of the root of the tree, so if we have two more nodes on this path. So let's consider two different cases. Uh, one case, if this Two parents are in the in different sides of x. So if you have x, and for example, p is to the left from the x, and g is to the right from x, like this. So x is the right par right child of p, and p is the left child of g, or the the opposite. So you, so the, the direction of these two edges is different. A, b, c, and d. 
Then how to make this x the root of this subtree? So this 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 g is something here. Sorry. This g is sum of something. So we need to make this x the root of this subtree. Well, it's very simple. We make this x the root of this subtree. Now we need to put this p and g as the left and the right child of x. And here we put all other subtrees. Yeah, that's all. Again, this is the same tree as this. It's, it contains the same set of elements in the same order. Mm -hmm. But here, the, this x is the root of this subtree. That's, that was the plan. Uh, you can make this operation by making two simple rotations. So if you rotate this edge first and then rotate this edge. Well, you can do it by yourself. So you can just, yeah, yes, it's just two zig operations. You make simple rotation of this as edge and then rotation of this edge. You will, you will have this big picture. So the easiest way to implement this is to, uh, the easiest way to implement this is to make a function which makes one rotation. So you, you create one function which makes this rotation. And here you, you simply call it twice. You call it for this pair of nodes and for this pair of nodes. And finally, finally, the third case, if these two edges have the same direction. So for example, you have x, it's parent p and parent g, like this. Ah, yes, this, this operation is called zigzag. Yes, this is the final case. So if you have a situation like this, then you make a operation like this. You make this x the root of the tree, put p here, put g here, and assign all the trees here. That's the same if you make, again, two rotations, but you need to first make this rotation and then make this rotation. So first you make rotation of this upper edge and then the rotation of this bottom edge. That's all. That's the whole algorithm. Cool. Again, how to implement this? Uh, you implement a very simple way. Uh, you take this node x and while this x is not the root of the tree, you make one of these three actions. So you take your current, uh, current node x, you see what is the parent of x and what's the grandparent of x. If you have no grandparent, if p is the root, you make this one rotation. If you have two parents, then you look on direction of these two edges if direction is different, you make this operation. If this direction is the same, you make this operation. Every time you move this x up to the tree, so every time you have no, you have this subtree, and now after this operation, x is the root of this subtree. So every time you move this x uh, two positions up to the root. Yeah? So let's let's make some example here. Let's let's have some big example. Then it's because of 15 here. Let's make 10 here. Let's make something. Yeah. Do we need two more operations? Let's make two more. Let's make 24 here and 23 here. Yeah, th this whole zig zig. Yeah, right. <clears throat> and let's, if you want to access this node, so you want to access this play, so you may go, you go down to this node and then call play for this node. What will happen? So you look on this node. So now X is here. You look on two parent nodes. This is P, this is G. 
Now you see the direction of these two edges is the same, so you need to call zig zigzag operation. So you, you make this zigzag operation. How to make zigzag operation? Uh, you make this node the root 23, 24, 25. So like this. 23, and then here 24, and here 25. So this x moved up to, 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 the, to the root. Uh, now again, you look on this node, uh, look, look, look at two parent nodes. So this is P, this is G. You see the direction of these edges is different. So you need to apply this zigzag operation. So you apply this zigzag operation. 21, 23, 27. 21, 23, 27. Uh -huh. So you make this the left child of this. This is actually this. This is that. Now x is here. Cool. And now finally you have this x. This is the parent of x. So you need to apply this one zig operation. So you apply this one zig operation. So 23 is here, 15 is here. Uh, this is now the left child, this is now the right child. That's all. Now 23 is the root of the tree. Hmm. Easy. That's all. That's all. Um, and now we have an hour to prove that time complexity is actually logging. Uh, <clears throat> cool. So uh, now, actually, if you want to implement this, it's very simple. That, that's that, that's all the picture you need. Uh, you, again, what, what happened? You you make this all this operation. In the end of each operation, you call this play operation. This play operation simple. It's like while x is not the root. You look on two, two parents, apply one of these operations. Each operation is actually the combination of two rotations. So you implement this rotation, and each, each time you just call this rotation and make one rotation or these two rotations. This rotation, this rotation, or this rotation, and this rotation. And so on. It's actually like 30 lines of code. Maybe less, if you are um, good in coding. Um, that's all. That's all. Now the tricky part. We will prove that amortized time complexity is logarithmic. We will actually prove uh, uh, better time complexity. We'll prove a little bit more uh, here. We'll pro put a little bit, little bit more important inequality. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Um, let's go. So, how to prove? the amortized time complexity. Uh, look, if you remember, we discussed amortized time complexity in the previous semester. Uh, and usually, to prove the amortized time complexity, you use the potential method. So you have something like that. So usually, when you, when you need to prove the amortized time complexity, you just say that amortized time equal to real time plus change of some potential function. When this phi is some potential function. Or ten T R. So we will as we will assign some potential function to the current state of our splay tree. And then we, when we call this play operation, we will look about uh, we'll look on how much time do we spend to, to make this play and what is the total change of the potential. And if potential is increasing, we will say that amortized time is more. When potential is decreasing, we'll say amortized time is less. And the, um, the idea is uh, to make such potential function. Uh, so when we make uh, some long operation, so when you, when, 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 this x is deep in the tree, so when we make very long splay operation, this potential should be decreasing. Yeah. So we need to find some good potential function, which is decreasing when we make some long operation in our splay tree. 
How do the map position choose? In Java, no pointers. In Java, you have pointers. In Java, you have only pointers. Yes, all objects in Java are pointers. It's not a big problem. Uh, if you then if you don't have pointers in your programming language, you can just assign uh, some indices to all nodes. So you can assign some numbers to each node, and just instead of pointers, you have the index of this node in your big array. You make a big array of all your nodes, and each instead of pointers, you have index in this array. So if if you don't have pointers in your language, it's kind of strange and. 2025, 21. But if you don't have pointers, you 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 still can implement binary search trees. Um, what is this? Hmm. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a real streamer. I I have no idea what does it mean. But but thank you anyway. Um, good. <clears throat> now let's go. So again, the trick is to find a good potential function. If we find, well, again, let me explain it once again. We we already discussed it in the previous semester, but it was a long time ago. Let me discuss this. Again. Let's let's make, explain this again. So why is this is the good amortized time complexity? Because if you look on this sum, so if you look on this. Total. No, let's take the sum of amortized time complexities for all these operations. So if you have sequence of operation, let's look on the sum of all the amortized time complexities. It will be the same as the sum of real time plus total change of, of potential. This total change of potential will be non-negative. We will assign such, such potential which is non-negative. We'll use only non-negative potential functions just to keep it simple uh, and it means that total time is no more than total amortized time and then i will prove that this amortized time is is log n so this sum will be no more than k log n that's the plan so i will assign some special potential function such that this amortized time is no more than some c log n. That's the plan. So I will find the function phi such that this amortized time is no more than c log n. I will just prove this. Mm -hmm. And if I prove this, then the real time will be no more than k log n. Mm -hmm. Because this sum of real times is no more than sum of amortized time minus this total uh, change of potential. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, hope it's clear. So if you missed this in the, in, the, in the previous semester, you can check the previous semester. We will talk about Fibonacci heaps. It was much more complicated data structure. This is easy data structure. Cool. Oh, let's let's go. So the, 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 again, again, the key is to find the good potential function. How will construct a good potential function? We will construct a very simple way. First, let's assign some weights to all the nodes. So let's say that b of x is the weight of node x. And today, I will consider that all, all the weights are equal to one. Just for, today we will prove very today we'll prove very simple time complexity. If you want to prove something more interesting, you may want to assign different weights to different nodes. But today we'll prove only this logarithm time complexity. So, so we will prove the very simple case. Okay. Now uh, let's say that let's say s of x is the weight of subtree. So we have this x, x is the root of some subtree, so the total weight of all 
nodes in this subtree is S of this X. Sorry, my my chat is broken. Oh, cool. Now, and finally, let's call that the rank of this X is just log base two of this S X. No, it was broken, but <laughs> also it was quiet, but, but it was broken. <clears throat> cool. That's all. That's, that's the whole preparation. Now the potential will be just the sum of all ranks. That's all. That's the whole plan. That's how we construct the potential function for splay trees. It looks like kind of magic, and it is kind of magic. So all, all this theory was invented by Tarjan and Slater. Ah, you actually, Danny Slater is on Cold Forces. You may find him on Cold Forces. Sometimes he makes some comments in uh, for some problems, like you know that this problem can be solved using the trees which I invented. Very cool guy. Uh, he's also a coach of uh, Carnegie Mellon ICPC team. You may you may visit him, you you may meet him in some world finals if you ever attend world finals. So he's a really cool guy who can find con forces, uh, and he invented all this theory. Uh, I believe in eighties when it was invented. I'm not sure. Let me check. Just. To be sure, uh, do, 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 do. this paper was in do, bo, 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 bo. yes, eighty five. This is nineteen eighty five. I was one year old. <laughs> cool. <clears throat> um, so this 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 proof is. A, looks like a like a kind of magic uh, so you we build some strange function then assign this amortized cost and then I will prove that if you use this function with this amortized cost the time complexity will be linear sorry uh, can you not interrupt me during the lecture please thank you cool now now, that, that, that's all. That, that, that's this potential function. Now I'll just apply this potential function with this amortized cost and prove that this amortized cost is logarithmic. That's the plan. Uh, now, what will I prove actually? I will prove the following inequality. I will prove that amortized cost of this play operation is no more uh, than 1 plus 3 multiplied by difference of these ranks. So this is the new rank of x. This is the old rank of x. So you start by, you take this x and make, make it the root of the tree. So this is the old rank of x. This is the new rank of x. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. no, first, let's see that this is enough. So if we prove this, then we prove that this um, amortized cost is logarithmic. Uh, that, no, that's simple. So let's prove that this is no more than log n. Can you prove this? <laughs> so what is the new rank of x? So new rank of x is the logarithm of the total weight of all these nodes. Total weight of all these nodes is n, right? So after you make this play operation for this node x, so since it, this is the root of the node, this total weight is n. So this new rank is logarithm of this size. This size is n. Mm -hmm. So this, this, this is log n.
And this stuff is negative, so this is no more than one plus free login. This is a big old fan login. So that's simple. <clears throat> but actually, this inequality is much more much more cool. So, so we will use this inequality later in this course. So, so this is much more interesting. So it basically says that if you try to split some node, then complexity depends on the current rank of this node. So if you try to split some tree which is closer to the root, so some node with big rank, so if this rank is big, then this difference is small. So actually time complexity of splaying the nodes which are closer to the root is less than log n. So if you try to split some big nodes, which have a lot of children, time complexity will be small. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move to the, to, to the proof. Now, I will just present you the proof from this paper. So if it, it also looks like kind of magic, we'll just apply all this, make some strange uh, operations and see that is, it is correct. We'll just see this correct. Uh, how I'll see this? I will prove the same inequality for all different operations. So I will, I will do the following. I will prove that if you look on every simple operation here, uh, time complexity will be like this. So for for this zig operation, time complexity will be no more than one plus three rank x minus rank x. And for these two operations, uh, zig zag or zig zig. will be no more than just free Rx minus Rx, <coughs> like this. Now, let's notice that I have this plus one here, but I don't have this plus, plus one here. So here I have this difference of ranks plus one for this zig operation. But for these two operations, I have just this free multiplied by difference of ranks. I don't have this plus one. That's important. Why it's important? Because uh, this time complexity of splay is actually the sum of these time complexities of all these operations. So if you start from, from some node x, you have this pair, and you make some operations. You make some zigzag or zigzag operations. So you have this zigzag or zigzag. You have some number of these operations. And finally, in the end, you have maybe one zig operation, or maybe not. Now, if you look on this time complexity of, of all separate operations, then time, time complexity of this first zig zig, let's say, is uh, rank two minus rank one. Uh, time complexity of the second is rank three minus rank two, this rank four minus rank three, and so on. And finally, we write k minus uh, k minus one. Mm -hmm. So, if you calculate the sum of all these time complexities, and here we have one plus. Uh, uh, it's minus one, minus two. Uh, chi minus k minus r chi minus one. So if you calculate the sum of all these same complexities, mm -hmm. all these middle ranks will be eliminated. So this we have uh, r2 minus r1, r3 minus r2, and so on. So all these uh, all these intermediate ranks will be eliminated. So you have, in the end, you will have one plus Rk minus R1, like this. Mm -hmm. That's why I can only have this plus one in this zig operation. In, in both these operations, I cannot allow this plus one. Mm -hmm. Because if you have plus one, then in this sum, you will have sum of all these ones. So total length of X will depend on the number of these operations. But if you don't have this plus one, it's just difference of these ranks. Then if you have sum of all these operations, you will have only this last rank minus first rank. Cool? I need to erase everything. Is, is it clear by now? 
Now, now it's the time when I erase everything and just show you the proof. Let's wait, let, let's wait. Let's wait one more moment. Let's prove this. I, I don't need a lot of space to prove this version. So first, let's prove this time complexity of zig operation. It's simple. Let's look on this picture. So time complexity of zig operation is time plus change of potential. Uh, time is just one. You, we need to make one rotation. So this is one. Uh, and what is the change of potential? Change of potential is, again, potential function is sum of all ranks. Let's check which nodes actually change the ranks. So all ranks here are the same, all ranks here are the same. So inside these subtrees, all ranks remain the same. So the only two nodes which change the ranks are this x and p. So this delta phi is new rank of x minus rank of x and new rank of p minus rank of p. Mm -hmm. Now let's see. <clears throat> uh, now I just claim that this difference is less than zero. Mm -hmm. So this is no more, no more than one plus x minus x. And since this is greater or equal than zero, it is no more than one plus three x minus zero. Yeah, good enough. So it's simple. So for this one zig operation, again, how, how do you calculate the time complexity? You see what is the real time of this operation and what is the change of potential. Real time is just one and change of potential is this. So you have this node and this node, uh, for this, the, the, the rank has changed. For all other nodes, the rank has not changed. So you, ch you look on the change of rank of this node X and change of rank of this node P. Calculate this, this is negative, here we have this. It's very simple, very simple. Cool. But that's, that's only for this zig operation. This zig operation is simple because we allow this plus one. In these two operations, we don't allow this plus one. So we, we will need to kind of get rid of this plus constant factor. So this, this, this will be tricky, but for this zig operation it's actually pretty easy. Whew. Ready? Now let's move to these two operations. I will need some space. Whew, let's go. Start with some. Let's start with zigzag operation. What happens when you have zigzag operation? Well, let's draw a picture again. You have this. Oh. We have this x, this p, this g. We have some node here. B, c, d. Now we apply zigzag, so this x is now the root, p is here, g is here, a, b, c, and a. Nice. So that's zigzag. Now, let's just, uh, ju just, ju just, just show the time complexity. So. Let's look on this time complexity. Time complexity will be, uh, I'll just make it in one step. So we need two operations to make zigzag. Yes, yeah, so we make two rotations plus change of the potential. What is the change of potential? Again, all the nodes here have the same rank. The only, only these three nodes change the rank. So we look, let's look on the change of ranks of these three nodes. So it's new rank of x minus rank of x plus new rank of 
p minus rank of p plus new rank of g minus rank of g. Hmm? Makes sense. That's all. Can't we make something XP? What does it mean? I don't get it. Sorry, I don't get your question. So this simple zigzag operation, yeah? This time complexity of zigzag operation. <sighs> well, let's simplify this. Let's simplify this. Uh, let's see. First, let's uh, see that this node and this node have the same ranks. Again, rank is just the logarithm of the size. So this g, all g, and this new x have the same size. Yeah. So this node contains all these nodes, this node contains all these nodes. So it's the same set of nodes. They have the same size sum of weights. So the rank of these two nodes is the same. So we have this uh, plus new rank of x and minus new rank of g. They just eliminate it because they are the same, right? Now, I need to get rid of this. I need to get rid of this. Uh, so it's all rank of p, it's here. So this all rank of p is uh, greater than, so rank of p is greater than rank of x. This rank of p is greater than rank of x. So if I have this minus rank of p is no more than minus rank of x. Right? That's all, that's enough. So all this is no more than 2 plus minus, minus 2 ranks of x this minus ranks and this minus x, plus new rank of p and plus new rank of g. Cool. And now I will prove that this sum is no more than 2 new rank of x minus rank of x. Here I have 2 instead of 3 because I know that that's how the proof works. This, this, is, this is more strict an equation. If we prove this, we will also prove uh, then the same with the three. Because this thing is not negative, so I'll just prove more strict an equation. Cool? Because I know that this is how it's working. I know the proof. If you don't know how, how, how to prove this, you may spend some time to find this. But I, I have no idea how did you get it. They somehow they found this this proof. That's cool. Um, okay, so let's prove this. Uh, so we need to prove this. Let's move uh, this to the right and this to the left. So we have two R X here, and we have minus two R X here, and then we have minus two R X here and minus two R X here. So these two will be eliminated. We can eliminate this and this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now I'll, we'll move these two to the left and this to the right. To, to this two to the right and this to the left. So I will have new rank P my plus new rank G minus two new ranks of X is no more than minus two. Are you, with, are you with me? <laughs> By now, there is very, very simple, very, very simple transformations. I will, I just uh, skip some non-important parts and move everything from left to right and so and, and vice versa. Okay, quite simple transformations. Cool. And now let's do something intelligent. So now let's remember that these ranks, these ranks, are actually logarithm of these sizes. So what happens if you have sum of logarithms? Sum of logarithms is just logarithm of, of the product. Yeah? And so this thing is actually just logarithm 
of the following thing. So it's new size of P multiplied by new size of, of G and divided by, I'll just write it twice, new size, new size of X multiplied by new size of X. And I need to prove that this logarithm is no more than minus two. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's... Now I will split, now I will remove this logarithm. So I need to prove this logarithm is no more than minus two. That's mean, I, I mean, I need to prove that this is no more than one fourth. And I will split these two fractions like this. Ah, that's all. That's all. And now the intelligent part. Now let's look what's coming. Now let's look why this is, is correct. Let's see. So what happens here? The first fraction is the size of the tree P, so it's this size divided by the size of x. So it's divided by this big sign. Right? And here we have uh, the size of this right part divided by this size of x. Mm -hmm. well, let's assign some... I need three more letters. Well, let's have alpha, beta, gamma. Okay, okay. Let's have alpha, beta, gamma. So the first, the first fraction is alpha divided by gamma, and second is beta divided by gamma. And this gamma is actually the sum of this alpha gamma is greater or equal than alpha plus beta. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now let's see, these two fractions uh, have sum no more than one. So if you, if you look on the sum of these two fractions, it is less equal than one. No, because this gamma is just the sum of this. So you can think about it very easily. So this is the fraction of the size of this set divided by this whole set. And this fraction is the size of this small set divided by the size of this whole set. So the sum of these two fractions is no more than one. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, and the, 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 these are these two fractions. This is, fr this is fraction, this size of left divided by size of the whole. This is the size of the right divided by size of the whole. Thing. And now I just claim that if you have two fractions, uh, and the sum of these fractions is no more than one, then the product of these fractions is no more than one fourth. No, why is this correct? No, because if you look on the maximum of this two of this product, the maximal of this product is when these two fractions are equal. So this this product is maximized, then I have two equal fractions. Uh, so if you and if the sum is no more than one, it means that both these fractions are no more than one. 1.5. It means that the product is no more than one fourth. <laughs> That's the magic. That's all. So again, that, 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 that's the whole proof. So how did, how did we prove that the time complexity is what we want? Uh, we just write this time complexity. So this is the real time. This is the change of potential. Now we just transform it a little bit to get this fraction. So and here we just remember that this rank is a logarithm of the size. So this sum is just the product. We mod modify it to make this product of two fractions. And now just look on these two fractions, see that the sum of these two fractions is no more than one. It means the product of these two projects, fractions is no more than one four. Cool. That's all. Okay, let's, let, let's prove the second one. Now we'll just prove the 
second time complexity in the same way. So what happens when you have zig-zig operation? Then you have this x, p, g, and all these subtrees, a, b, c, and d. And when you make zigzag, zigzag operation, you make this x the root of this tree, you make p here, g here, and all this tree here. Now we'll just do all the same thing. Let's say that amortized time is 2 plus change of potential. Change of potential is the same as new rank of x minus old rank of x plus new rank of p minus old rank of p plus new rank of g minus old rank of g. Now we'll transform it to remove everything that's not important. So uh, this old rank of g is the same as new rank of x. Well, remove all the rank of g. I'll remove new rank of x. Now I need to get rid of this p. Uh, this p uh, is no more than rank of g, is greater or equal than rank of g. So this minus rank p is no more than minus rank x. Uh, now I need to remove this rank, this new rank of, of, of p is actually less than rank of x. So this new rank of p is no more than new rank of x, right? Well, just just remove an unnecessary, so it will it is no more than two minus a rank of x minus rank of x minus two rank of x plus plus new rank of x. Plus, plus new rank of G. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I need to prove that this thing is no more than free new rank X minus rank X. Again, do the same thing. Just move this to the right, this to the left. I move this two to the right, this move to the left. Uh, so what happens here? I have plus new rank minus three new ranks. So it will be minus two new ranks of X. Uh, here I have minus two ranks plus three ranks. So it will be plus rank of X. And this will be plus new rank of G. There's no more than minus two. Again, I'll, I, I remember this, this rank is logarithm of size, so it's, again, I'll just, just do the same. So it's size of x divided by new size of x multiplied by new size of g multiplied by new size of x. Hmm? Not, not too fast. Okay. I just do the same thing. I need to prove that this is no more than one form. And I prove it in the same way. So let's look on this equation. So on this fraction. So it's fraction. So this is size of x. So it's size of this subtree. And this is size of g. Size of this subtree. And this size of x is size of this whole tree. Now again, you see that this big tree consists of these elements plus these elements plus element P. So the size of this big tree is, is more than sum of these two sizes. Mm -hmm. So again, we have product of two fractions. Sum of these fractions is no more than one. So you use, use the same trick us here and see this the this product is no more than one form. That's all. That's all. Cool.
Pum, 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 pum. That's basically the whole proof. I'm just waiting for your questions. So if you don't have any questions, I can talk about any advantages. Uh, if you just need to, if you just need to have some binary search tree, it's actually usually not very important which spell tree. Uh, it's in practice, it's not so widely used. I may think because it's amortized cost because of the amortized cost. In, in AVL3, you have guaranteed the worst, kind, worst time time complexity is log n. So it's always working log n time. These trees, sometimes more, some operations may, may take a long time. So since this time, uh, time complexity is amortized, so some operations actually work too, too, too long. But, but so it, it's, I believe, not, not so cool to use it in some very fast data structures when you need a uh, fast response for all your operations. Uh, but if you have some algorithms, it's widely used because uh, it, it actually sometimes it works faster than log, log n time. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Um, so again, let me move to this. Uh, so, in the first lecture, on the first semester, we discussed that we only measure the time complexity in the worst case, right? Uh, but sometimes you have not the worst case, sometimes you have some, some case. You don't know if your case is the worst possible case. Uh, worst time, time complexity is good because it guarantees you that all cases are not uh, in, in all cases, your data structure works fast, yeah? but sometimes you think that maybe your case is not the worst case. So maybe in your case, it actually works faster than the worst case. Uh, let me explain. So for example, let's have some sequence of operations and the sequence tries to access the same node multiple times. So you have this operation, you try to find some node and you do it multiple times. So you do it k times. So you ju just try to access the same node multiple times. And now, if you use some some usual binary tree like AVL tree or tree, so if you have some AVL tree or red black tree or tree or anything, uh, what will be the time complexity? It will be k log n because each time you walk to this node, so you need to spend log time to find this node and you do it each time on each operation. So top time complexity will be k log n. Uh, now what happens in this play tree? So what what will be what will what will be the time complexity if we just try to access the same node k times in a row? Just 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 in sequence each time you try to access the same node what will be the total time complexity of, of all these operations? Not exactly, it's not exactly log n. You still need to access this node all this, right, all this time, so it should be log n plus k, right? that's, that's more correct. Well, because in, in splay tree, you try to, you, you spend log n time to make the first splay operation. So in the first, the first splay operations, you, you, you spend log n time. After this first operation, you make the splay, so this x is now the root of your tree. So all these other find operations don't need to, to make any splays. They just go to the root, find x, and finishes. So all other operations works in constant time. So the factor temporary will be this. So it turns out that in some special cases, uh, splay trees actually have the better time complexity than some other standard binary search trees. And there is a, there is a very cool theory. I will not explain it, uh, uh, but let's, let's just take a, take, take, take a look. So 
There is a cool theory which tries to understand not only the worst case, but all possible cases. Uh, this theory works like this. Uh, let's have some sequence of operations. So imagine you have some sequence of operations. Uh, let's find the best possible binary search tree for this set of operations. So if you have some special binary search tree, which works specifically for this set of operations, so you know all these operations in advance, you may do any rotations you want, and you do, you, you do anything just to optimize this set of operations. So if you have this binary search tree, let's say that the time complexity of these operations will be T optimal. Minimal time for all binary search trees. Let's just, just let's check all possible binary search trees and find the optimal binary search trees for this specific set of operations. Now, let's call the same set of operations in a split tree. You will have some CT split. The question is, what may be the maximal possible difference? So if you just take the difference between these two operands, so what may be the maximal difference between the time complexity of this play tree and maximal possible uh, theoretical, like theoretically optimal time complexity for some, some binary search tree for this set of operations? And that's an open question. It's nobody knows. Uh, what people know? Actually, there is a hypothesis that uh, this thing is no more than constant. Uh, why it may be correct? Why it may be correct? Because uh, there are some special cases. Uh, what's the problem? How to prove this? How to prove this? You need to find for some set, some set of operations, the optimal binary search tree. We don't know how to find the optimal binary search tree. Yeah. So so it's, it's kind of it's it's very very it's, this is very very difficult to prove. But for some special cases, we actually know the time complexity of the optimal binary search tree. Uh, for example, for example. Let's say you try to access nodes in the sequence. So you try to access node one, then find node two, and so on, then find node n. So if you make this sequence of operations, uh, we know that we can do it in linear time, right? No, we just move this one, then move the next element, and so on. You, you can do all these operations in linear time. Now, if you look on the splay tree and try to run the same set of sequence of operations in splay tree, uh, you may prove that the time complexity of the splay tree is also linear. And that's interesting because splay tree doesn't try to optimize this set of operations. It just make all these splay operations try to rebalance itself somehow and it turns out that it still works in linear time for this set of operations. Uh, and there are other special cases. For example, if you have different, well, like, like here, if, if you access some elements uh, uh, fre more frequently than some another set of elements, these fre frequently accessed elements will be closer to the root. So the time complexity to access this small set of elements will be smaller than time complex of access or all, all, all elements which are not so frequently accessed. So somehow this play tree maintains uh, the frequently accessed elements closer to the root. So the time complexity is kind of optimized. So, so 
people trying to find some case uh, when this splay tree works actually uh, uh, worse than some optimal binary search tree and they still didn't find any so we they tried some strange set of operations for which we know some optimal binary search tree and in all these cases it turns out that splay tree also works in the same time complexity nobody knows why but still a cool fact uh, Can we all modify play tree operations in such cases like no push in the node uppers and the next roll after still many operations? No, the trick is we don't need to optimize play tree. Play tree already works optimal. Nobody knows why. But it turns out if you have some set of operations, play tree somehow optimizes itself. Uh, sometimes it's happened for, for some other data structures. So it's known, for example, for optimal caches. So if you look on how cache works, optimal cache, uh, then uh, there are some cache strategies which is known to, to, to be optimal. So there's no, to, that you can't, like with constant factor. So the difference between uh, some cache strategies and the optimal cache strategy is no more than constant. So sometimes for some data structures, this happens. So maybe it's still, maybe it happens for, for the split trees, but it's, it, it's very hard to prove because again, you need to prove that uh, for all possible trees, the optimal time is this. And you kind of need to prove the lower bound for them complexity. So you need to prove that uh, all possible binary search trees works not faster than this. That's, that's hard to prove. Cool. Okay, well, the, the final thing I want you to remember till the three more lectures, like in three weeks, maybe in, maybe in four weeks, maybe in four weeks, we will need this play tree again. And we will need it to optimize another data structure, which is link up tree. Uh, how we will optimize the link up tree? We will optimize the link up tree in the following way. We will make some data structure and we will use play trees inside the data structure. And the time complexity of some operation will be calculated as sequence of splays. So we will make some splays, we will splay some operation X, then operation uh, X1, X2, X3, and so on. So we'll make the sequence of splays. Mm -hmm. And if you just say that each splay is, uh, works in log n time, we'll have log square. But we, we know that the time complexity of splay is actually no more than one plus change of difference of these ranks uh, and so on. So we'll use this instead and calculate the sum of all these differences. And it turns out that this sum is no more than log n. That's the plan for the future lecture. So we will, we will maintain some weights with some potential function, with the same potential function. And we, when we have the sequence of some splay operations, uh, we will calculate uh, the sum of all these time complexities. And this sum will be no more than log n. And if you just use the regular binary search tree, you will have log n in, in, in all these operations. And so this sum is will be log square. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we will optimize another data structure using these play trees instead of regular binary search trees. So that's the plan for the future. Any more questions? It's too fast. Maybe I forgot something. I don't think so. I don't think so. Again, you, you, you may have all, all the operations you, you need in the binary search trees. So you need operations, you need to, you can find the elements, you can find the closest element, find the minimal element, fi find the maximal. Again, how to find the minimal element? You just go to the mi minimal element 
and then makes play of this minimal element. When you need maximal element, you go to the maximal element, then makes play of this maximal element. You can make split operations, merge operations. You, you can think about this. That's just think. I will put it in the home task. Uh, but you, you can think about it. You, you can make split operations, merge operations. All operations you need for the binary search trees, you can make with split trees. Very cool data structure. Uh, there is a free missing. What missing? What missing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where? What did I miss? I didn't see. Okay, I think that's all for today.